Here's a little photography tip. If you get out of the bus and walk past the tourist information and onto the ports and docks, this is where you find amazing photo opportunities because there are no tourists. You've got a clear view over to the church and the Lutza are framing your picture. It's pretty good. Alright, getting here to Matashlok was and I'll say it was interesting because there are so many people filing into the bus that they didn't catch a seat, which is kind of fine, but the trip takes over half an hour and maybe an hour if everyone wants to stop everywhere. And it's super bumpy if you take the bus in Malta. It gets sickening at times. I have no motion sickness usually. But in Malta, I often do. Anyway, and it got so hot and the air was so stale, it was it was a challenge. <laughs> So just so you know, avoid rush hours during bus traffic and always get in first so you can get in right away. Just think of where you're standing when you're waiting for the bus so you can just like file right in. Anyway, now I'm in Maschaschlag and this is a traditional market. It's held every day until 2 p.m. And on Sundays it is the fishing market, which is the more local thing. Right now, every day of the week, that's more the touristy attraction in Maschaschlag. looking for Maltese sweets, try brittle nutty bars or almond and nougat bars. They are really, really sweet, but usually you can get a little taste to see if you like. <music> what makes Massashlok so sought after is its prettiness. It is one of the best places to go see in Malta. It has these amazing colorful fishing boats and it has a retained old traditional charm which is why a lot of tourists flock here. So it gets really, really busy. You will also notice eyes painted on the boats. These are an old Phoenician custom meant to protect the boat and the fishermen from evil. even a little bit of sandy beach. Of course, since Matashlag produces damaged fish, you should really go and eat out in one of the many restaurants by the harbor. There's a lot of fresh seafood, fresh fish, and I've just asked a local because she recommended two places, as a lot of them are kind of touristy and have high prices, so she recommended Rising Sun Bar and Karubia. Here's a fun fact, the word Masa Schlag comes from two different languages. The first Masa means port and harbor and the second one Schlag is actually Maltese and means southeast because it is a southeast harbor. Also there's a related word from Catalan which means Schlag and that is referring to the Sahara wind, the Sorokan wind which is super dry and blows through here occasionally as well. I'm in Tartian at the famous Tartian temple site in Malta and these are impressive places because it took 1000 years to complete. It was from 3600 before Christ to 2500 before Christ and then it was later not used that much but in 2400 before Christ until 1500 before Christ it was later used for cremation purposes. The site was rediscovered in 1930 when local farmers were trying to plow the area and they couldn't because of all the stones. So after a short time the museum in Valletta was contacted and archaeological work proceeded from 1915 to 1919 and it was the biggest archaeological undertaking that has ever happened in Malta up until that point. So 
FMS Turkless Summit was in charge of the archaeological excavations and he enlisted local farmers and other locals to help him with the excavation processes but he also revolutionized the way the excavations were done because he used a much more scientific approach. Out of the four temples left, three have been renovated by Summit himself during his excavation. This doorway, for instance, has been completely rebuilt. And you can see a lot of the replicas here. And the originals, such as stone slabs or the fat lady, are in the Museum of Valletta. This, by the way, isn't really a fat lady. The one you must have seen in history or art classes. Actually, it's a sexless figurine, so it could have been a man or woman or neither. You can still see a little bit of the former decor which the houses had, such as decoration of slabs and reliefs of domesticated animals, which Tashiyam is famous for. And um, there are also pillars and some stones and altars, but most of it has been Again, I wrote it. When you go through the side and you go through arches, you can see the entrance area has holes and it's assumed that those were used to pull them shut to put something in front of it and pull it tight with ropes or close them off. Over there you can see the cremation area which was used in the Bronze Era and they also found together with the urns lots of decorative pieces which they gave as an offering to the deceased and on this altar which you can see there's a little hole inside it was the most important part of the temple see like there's a little bit inside where they found the burned animal bones of sheep and goats so maybe they were sacrificed here you can see the ox number one and there is the ox number two with a suckling pig there have also been shards of pottery depicting animals as well as animal bones, so they figured they might have had some religious importance. Here you can see the eastern part of the building, which is the oldest part, which is why it's the lowest, because there's not much that's left over, but you can still see the outline and the facade and a little bit of the doorway and the hall. The erosion has advanced as far that they had to put up the giant tent like they did in Agaim and Mnaja so they can protect it from the elements and from even further erosion. Two urns remain and it's still not quite clear what they were used for, but you can see the holes here, which is maybe where they pulled through a rope to carry them. Another important fact regarding the Tashiam temples is that it actually garnered public interest to preserve historical sites all over Malta. Before that, it wasn't really that big of an issue, but then afterwards it became much more important. There were public laws passed to preserve historical sites and you could no longer plow through a field and just dig up some stones. Honestly, the town of Tashiam isn't really super pretty, but you have to walk to the Tashiam temples anyway from the bus stop, so you might as well just take a few detours, look at the alleyways and the colorful doors, and imagine its former glory, because a lot of it looks kind of in disrepair, which is a bit sad. If you want to complete your visit to Tashiam, you should also go to Hal Safrieni Hypogeum, which is less than 10 minutes west of the Tashiam temples. It is also a site that was excavated basically at the same time. I hope you like my little travel video about a day trip to Masashlok in Malta from Valletta and on the way I showed you Taxim temples. There's much more blog content with travel tips, where to go, what to do, maps and all of that. Click through to the blog, like and subscribe for more travel videos because there's an entire playlist about Malta travel. I hope you stay travel tastic and see you in the next video. Bye! Standing here waiting by the bus stop is awful because it's so smelly. There's so many fumes, it's super loud and the traffic's super fast. So be really careful when you cross the street because cars literally do not care if they hit you. Apparently, because they just race at you. Full speed.